Today's topic, Forbidden Fruit. Five of the coolest Volkswagens we never got in the USA. Hey everybody, Nathan Brown here with FCP Euro, and today we're talking about something very near and dear to my heart, Volkswagens. I've always been a Volkswagen guy, I've always owned Volkswagens, and it's, I don't know why, it's just one of the brands that I've kind of aligned myself to, I really vibe on. So it's cool that I get a chance to talk about some of the cooler Volkswagens that we never got in the USA. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! Come back, one year! For whatever reason, there's a lot of awesome cars that are sold in Europe and across the world, that we do not get in the United States. So up first is probably one of the poster cars for any hardcore Volkswagen fan. That's the Mark II Volkswagen Rally Golf. The Rally Golf is basically just like a Mark II GTI. Any GTI sold between 1985 and 1992 in the United States, except the Rally Golf is bad. It is a Group A homologation car. So basically, uh, back in the 80s, Group B, uh, the rally cars were around. They were these crazy fire-breathing things, super fast, super loud, and they were super dangerous. So they were banned internationally for competition. Once the Group E stuff went away, they came up with a new rule set called Group A. And the rule with Group A is that basically 5,000 of a particular car had to be sold in a certain spec, and then that car could be used for racing. Volkswagen decided to go rally racing, and they came up with the Rally Golf. Basically, this is a homologation special, a car that they only built so they could go rally racing, which means it has a lot of cool parts, a lot of special parts, and a lot of things that you didn't see in any other car. If we're talking about Group A, probably the most famous Group A car that most people know of is the E30 M3. And while the E30 M3 was outrageously successful in what it did, the Rally Golf was maybe not so much. But you see a lot of the same similarities. So the Rally Golf has cool box fenders, has exclusive bodywork that's different than any other Mark II Golf. All wheel drive, which is pretty rad, has a supercharged four cylinder engine, and it has special headlights and a bunch of other stuff. While the Rally Golf was not successful at what it did, it still captured the hearts and minds of Volkswagen fans all over the world. As I mentioned, the Rally Golf wasn't actually a very successful rally car. A couple reasons for that. First up, the Synchro all-wheel drive is a front-wheel drive-based all-wheel drive system with a viscous coupling. It doesn't really send power to the rear unless the front is slipping. And in a rally situation, it's generally gonna understeer rather than kind of power through the corner like a classic you know, Subaru or something like that would do. Ding number two was that they actually changed some of the rules around supercharging at the time. So the potential competitiveness of the car was right out of the rip, just not gonna be there. And number three, as any Volkswagen fan will tell you, the G60 and specifically the G later supercharger is notoriously unreliable. They blew up constantly. In fact, the Rally Golf charger was so fragile, Rally crews, like the driver and the co-driver, they had to carry a spare supercharger in the car to change while they were on rally stages, which is kind of bonkers. So if you were to get behind the wheel of a stock Rally Golf here in the States or over in Europe, honestly, they're really slow. They're kind of painfully slow, but that doesn't matter because the combination of the independent rear suspension, the all-wheel drive, just the driving experience is so different than anything else Volkswagen made at the time. Just like an E30 M3, it's not gonna set the world on fire and be the fastest thing on the streets, but it's a super satisfying drive, it's a ton of fun, and it was never sold in the USA. So if there's an upside in any of this is that you can now legally import these cars into the United States. Unfortunately, just like an E30 M3, the prices have started to go through the roof. So it's very, very expensive. Where you could get a car for five or six grand a few years ago, they're now 25, 30 or more, depending on the car. Up next is what I consider to be one of the biggest misses for VW fans in the USA of the last two decades. That's the Mark III Scirocco. For those of you who remember, the Mark I and Mark II Scirocco, built on the A1 or Mark I chassis, was a phenomenal hit in the United States. They sold tens, if not maybe a hundred or so thousand of these cars. They were super common, super fun, and pretty inexpensive. Uh, sold alongside the other cars in the lineup, like the Jetta, the Rabbit GTI, and later on the Mark II GTI. They held their own, they held a special place within the Volkswagen lineup. 
until they announced they were gonna come out with a new Scirocco, the Mark III Scirocco, and it was gonna be based on the newest platform in the Volkswagen family, the Mark V. The Mark V chassis is actually called the PQ35. It's used on the Mark V, Mark VI, a bunch of different cars. It was the most modern, up-to-date, really revolutionary chassis to come from Volkswagen in quite a long time. It's got an independent rear suspension, modern design, great geometry, great technology, really a blast to drive. The Mark V GTI, for all of its benefits in terms of performance and how it drives, is maybe not the most popular looking Volkswagen. The Mark III Scirocco basically takes all of that same platform. It takes the same PQ35 chassis, takes the two liter turbo engine, takes either a DSG or a six speed manual transmission, puts it in a much smaller and arguably much more attractive body shape. I don't know why they didn't sell it here. Probably a lot of reasons why they didn't sell it here, but Volkswagen apparently took a stance that if they imported the Mark III Scirocco, it would steal sales from Volkswagen GTIs. The last thing I'll say about the Scirocco is I have been fortunate enough to see them in person a couple of times at the Waterfest back when that was like the peak VW show, especially on the East Coast. Forge Motorsport brought one over and then HPF in Canada would bring them in and do VR6 turbo swaps and all this stuff. It's a car I pine for. Like I wish we could have it, but we just can't. I guess that's how it goes. So if we're talking about a Mark III Scirocco and a car that we really can't get and really can't get anything close to it anytime soon, our next pick is one that you basically could have right now with a little bit of work, and that is the Mark VII GTI Club Sport and Club Sport S. I kind of look at GTIs like a Porsche 911 in a way. <laughs> Volkswagen and Porsche are tied together in a lot of different manners. They have very similar vibes, and if you get in a similar generation GTI and 911, they kind of present a similar feeling behind the wheel. Obviously, one's a super sports car and very expensive, and one's a little bit more practical, but the driving experience, the value, the sort of feedback they give is similar. All right, I find I, maybe it's a little bit of a stretch to say that a GTI is a 911 and a Club Sport is a GT3, but Hans Stuck himself, he basically said the same thing. So. I'm agreeing with the famous race car driver. If you disagree, put it in the comments. Maybe I'm crazy. A GTI Club Sport is different than the base model. It's got some special stuff, a little bit of sauce in there that's not available in the standard 911. There's not huge differences between the GTI and the GTI Club Sport, but they are enough that it makes a big difference from behind the wheel. So exterior wise, you have different front fenders. You have different front bumper. You have a special body kit, you have special wheels, you have a special aerodynamic package, and most importantly, you have special seats. The Recaro seats that are fitted to the GTI Club Sport are probably some of the best seats fitted to any car of the modern era. Outside of the looks, there's real performance in a Club Sport. So first up, it basically has a Golf R Turbo, that's IS38. Uh, makes an increase in horsepower, it makes 261 horsepower in normal mode, and over 280 in an overboost mode. You can get it in a manual or DSG, has special suspension, the whole nine yards. It's a really, really cool car, and it's just, it's just different enough that it's special. If it's special, then the Club Sport S is even more so. The Club Sport S is a little bit more hardcore. It's a lighter weight, has no back seats, has manual only, I believe it was two door only. You could easily build a car that's faster than the Club Sport. But for me, what makes it cool is that it's one of those cars that Volkswagen traditionally hasn't built. For years and years and years, there was all these really cool hardcore performance models and Volkswagen never sold them uh, in Europe and they never made them in Europe, never made them in the States. They finally made them in Europe. We still didn't get it in the States. I guess that's the way it goes. Our next choice is a really cool Volkswagen. It's something that I think would be awesome to have here in the States, but of course we don't have it. And that is the Volkswagen California 6.1 camper van. The California camper van is basically a transporter. So the transporter is the Volkswagen nomenclature for any of their van models. So it's a modern Eurovan. Where the Eurovan was a reasonable sales success, it was pretty expensive for what it was at the time. So they sold them and you could get camper versions, but they didn't sell a ton of them. This is the modern take and it's freaking awesome. So it's total connectivity, has an awesome two liter TDI Torquey engine, which if we're honest, is probably one of the reasons they don't sell it in the United States. Um, it's got a two burner stove. It's got swivel captain's chairs. It's got a pop top camper and it even has a self-leveling suspension. So when you're parking and you're camping, 
it levels itself out. So you're, I presume the food that you're cooking and the drinks you have on the table and your wine and cheese and all that doesn't roll off the table. It's freaking awesome. I think it's a little ironic. They call it a California camper van, seeing that they don't sell it in the United States. Well, I guess that's the definition of the word irony. They're selling the vibe, they're selling the experience, and I guess that's uh, how it goes. I'd love to have something like this to take to a racetrack. Do a little grilling, barbecuing, whatever you wanna do with some friends and, and just have a good time. It seems like a perfect Volkswagen to do that. It's probably a pretty easy argument to say, Americans aren't gonna buy a California camper van. They're not interested in a super expensive European van, but Americans do love one thing, and that's trucks. <laughs> you, think, you think a Power Stroke is better than a Duramax? Okay, okay, okay. Volkswagen does make a real truck, and that's the Amarok. The Amarok is a body on frame, honest to God pickup truck. You get it with a three liter twin turbo, TDI diesel engine, get it in all wheel drive or two wheel drive, standard or crew cab. It looks awesome. I bet it drives awesome. I just imagine that if they were able to sell that or decided to sell it in the United States, it would be an absolute hit because it's just so different, but I guarantee it would be so Volkswagen. The reason we don't get a lot of cool small pickup trucks in America is because of the chicken tax. The chicken tax is a 25% tax on any small or light duty truck that's produced outside the USA. It was introduced in legislature in 1964 because apparently at the time, West Germany and France were charging really high import taxes on American chicken. So this is like a retaliatory thing where we were striking back at them and it's like, oh, you're not gonna buy our chicken. We're not gonna buy your small trucks or make it hard to buy your small trucks or expensive to buy your small trucks. And obviously whatever bumps along the road that involve chickens have been smoothed out. So in the Amarok, got a couple of strikes against it, TDI engine, 25% chicken tax, generally gonna probably be a higher price compared to similar compact pickups. So it's unlikely that we're ever gonna see it here in the United States, but there's a lot of smaller pickup trucks that are kind of like this coming out now. There seems to be a rejuvenation of that market. So who knows, maybe we'll see an EV version sometime in the future. So there you have it. Our five top picks for cool, awesome Volkswagens that were never sold in the United States. It goes without saying, there's a ton more that I didn't talk about it. For example, the Golf Limited. Did I mention that? I didn't mention that. Somebody in the comments let the other people know what the Golf Limited was all about. What else did I miss? B5 RS4, Porsche 959, E46 M3 CSL, the list goes on and on. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a comment below. Hit us with a like, subscribe on the channel, and we will see you on the next one.